In this episode of Platinum Tech, we're talking about RB cam covers and showing you our new design. RB26 cam covers look amazing. They're probably the best cam design of any car ever, undisputed. They just don't work that well, and here's why. They just breathe. There's a lot of blow-by, and that's just the way they are. The bigger the stroke, the more they breathe, the more air they push, the more blow-by, the more oil in your catch can. So a standard factory cover has just got a flat plate with nothing else happening. It doesn't baffle, there's zero baffle. You can get an aftermarket baffle, like this one in this cover, which you can see has a small hole at one end. Oil and air flows up here into this baffled area. Here it's got some type of baffle plate and then you've got some sponge inside it, which is supposed to do the baffling job. So the idea behind baffling is to create surface area. Surface area then pulls the suspended oil particles out of the air mixture and gives them a place to accumulate and drip off. So the more you confuse that pathway, the faster you're gonna baffle it, and the more you've got, the better, obviously. A plate or a splash guard is more just that. It stops the splash off the camshafts. Several different aftermarket ways of stopping the splash, but we're not actually getting to the bottom of the problem, which is baffling and pulling the oil out of the air. So there's a bunch of aftermarket cam covers you can get for RBs at the moment. They're either too low, which look nice, and it looks a little too like a 2J, but too high gets incredibly expensive to manufacture. We sort of wanted something in between. We started working on a new design. You can have wet or dry sump in smooth or raised. The PRP lettering you can have without it and just have the finned sections through it without the logo. And we put up a post a while ago while we were working on the design and not just listening to Andrew Hawkins hammer us about this, this raised lettering finned option. We just thought we'd ask the public and the response was insane. Everyone wanted the raised RB20 style of logo uh, and, and raised lettering. So we went with it. People also wanted a smooth, not as many, but we decided to do that not that much different. So we wanted to give our cover not just a straight flat look, we ended up humping it for a few reasons, for the look and also for turbo clearance on the exhaust side, it lets the exhaust housing sit in that lump. So that's the exterior covered, now we'll get into the tricky bits. So we decided to come up with the most complex cam cover design ever made by a human. Just ended up that way. With our CFD design process, we wanted to incorporate this multi-layer baffling. And to get returns in each of the end caps, we had to make end caps that had a return loop in the intersection. So they just ended up being really complicated. We also wanted to keep in mind ease of manufacturing and being able to pass tools all the way through, make end caps separately, have them fit. But now that we're here, I'll tell you about how it works. CAD design CFD testing allows us to do all the prototyping and testing that you do by trial and error on an engine not really knowing what you're doing. You can simulate it on a computer and know exactly how all the dynamics of the air or fluid flows through an assembly and you can get it right to a T before you go and manufacture your first one. We know that our end result, reverse engineering it, we have a dash 12 fitting, which all these cam covers end up with dash 12 fitting on the exit. If we make it flow a dash 12 fitting through the whole thing with as much surface area as possible in many, many layers, we knew we were off to a good start. So all of these channels and holes through all the baffling equate to roughly at least the size of a dash 12 AN fitting. So to run through how the plates work, we have the initial baffling here. Once these are assembled, you end up with the first primary baffle. Now, underneath that primary baffle, we have several loops where oil comes in and air mixture through one end. It'll come down one channel, loop around the next channel, and then comes and uses both channels and, and separate as much oil from that air as possible. And then it'll go out the breather and into your dash 12. But before we get to any of that, we've got a preliminary baffle that goes the full length of the cover. So we've got a five millimeter step between these holes five mil step the whole way along to the other end, and then we start doing our laps. So we gave it the best chance we could possibly give it with a high volume cover. How do these covers come to you? Well, after we anodize them, they go together and we machine them obviously together and then we pull them apart after they're machined till we get that nice profiling and you can't see that they're a three piece cover. So we pull them all apart after anodizing, really clean them. 
we glue in the end pieces and they come obviously all specked up and nice. Then all you need to do is plonk in your factory OEM gasket and you bolt them in with a standard cap bolt which we provide that whole kit. Other than that, we've got an OEM thread for the oil cap so you can retain your original oil cap. You don't have to go to a, any sort of a dust 12 or anything like that. OEM, it's just easy and you can use your original pre-loved oil cap. So we might usually not install the baffle plates because people tend to want to pull them out and inspect them themselves, make sure they're all clean. And also you want to make them serviceable so you can clean them if you've had an engine push a whole heap of metal through it or, or whatever. It happens in RVs every now and then. So we make a aluminium plate so it's not too hard and the bolt sort of sinks into it and bites into it, acts like a bit of a spring washer. And you also use a little bit of Loctite, one drop on the very end of the bolt and that's enough to seal them in. They're either an M3 or an M4 bolt. They're two layers of different size bolts, but they work as intended and they don't drop into the engine because that would be bad. So the first car that these are actually going on, 9,500 RPM, 1,100 horsepower GTR, and we happen to have one right here, and these covers are going to go on it right now.